So Team Positive Vibes versus Team Zoom coming up next here. Let's get All it. Right. Let's get it. Um, yeah, I'm actually very excited for this one because uh, I've actually seen the most of Positive Vibes from the practice matches, and I kind of know how they play. So hopefully I'll get a good read on, uh, you know, the match and the board. Um, yeah. Also Team Zoom, I've seen them play a lot as well. So this one, this one will be a good one. I agree. I I'm definitely excited. agree. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how this, uh, how this goes. Um, Adef being the new player, by the way, in, in this uh, whole roster, uh, has been doing learning a lot and been playing a lot. And he's been really interesting to watch. So I really want to see uh, uh, Team Positive Vibes today. Uh, always bring in the good vibes, but also bringing in a lot of gameplay. They have a really nice dynamic, I would say, where they have kind of like a nice little... Uh, they know exactly uh, who's good at what. And then just promote that as much as they can. And I think that's really, really cool. Because, uh, like, some teams have to like, have a hard time figuring out, like, oh, I like to do this, you like to do that. Um, you know, I'm good at this, you're good at that. And uh, I think they have a really, uh, really nice uh, dynamic in that regard uh, for Chris and Adef. Uh, looks like yeah. some of them are currently on the character creation screen already. Uh, Adef and Zoodle still getting set up here. Yeah, I'm not sure what that background is for <laughs> ADEF, but uh, yeah. We finally found it, dude. <laughs> Glad you get this, get these players ready here in just a moment. Um, anything specific on the board that you would like to see, by the way, Blanks? Anything specific that uh, maybe stands out to you or that you think maybe it might be a more of a difficult uh, square for these teams to tackle? A difficult square. I would say anything capital. Honestly, anything capital. It's a it's a big test of uh, time management, right? Because it's it's very very time consuming to go into the capital. But you know, it could be rewarding if you have, let's say, a gold free and a Morgoth in like the same row or column. That could be like a nice play to go for. Um, also, you know, that could be synergy with like an Altus boss. Or, you know, anything capital related or underground or even I would love to see like a Moog Lord of Blood or a Melania. Honestly, those would be really cool to see. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I definitely, definitely agree. Um, I honestly I'm just looking forward to the group combos or the the, uh, the team combos that people have been pulling off with like, OK, I'll go do this. You go do that. And that like it starts to work into a line uh, itself. I always think it's just fascinating to watch, uh, to be honest. But I'm, I'm very, very excited um, to uh, see these two matches, kind of uh, these two teams go head to head. Uh, I've not seen a lot of team Zoom personally because honestly, I'm sleeping. I'm not gonna lie. When they practice, I'm schnoozing, so I have not got to see these guys play together that much. But I'm very excited to see like what they have for a dynamic as well, and like which which squares they prioritize. Um, it looks like uh, Adef is currently hyping himself up in the bathroom first uh, <laughs> before he uh, comes back and gets his game ready. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, just got to stall a little bit longer. It looks like Glance is currently checking in with the players, too. And uh, I don't know, man. I really would like to see – I'm trying to think of, like, some weapons that I would like to see. Uh, any specific weapons that you would like to um, have the players use? Any, well, any fan favorites? I know that uh, Tom is a big fan of the health and steeple. Yeah. So we're most likely going to be seeing him checking that greatsword at Gatefront because there's lots of really, really good greatswords that could possibly be in that chest. There's, yeah. there's Dark Moon, Alabaster, uh, uh Death's Poker. So we're probably going to be seeing a greatsword check from either team here. I mean, depending on the board, obviously. But uh, yeah, something like that would be really cool. Or honestly, like... It'd be cool to see, you know, like a star fist, even though it's, you know, kind of like the bread and butter of most challenge runners. It would be really cool to see one of these players pick that up and just start bulldozing every boss they come in contact with. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Definitely agree. That'd Maybe be... you can go for like a, a Melania or a Moog or something like that, because I think with that weapon, you could then have the confidence to go for one of those squares. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that. I'm I'm surprised that there uh, aren't any like new weapon pickups. Uh, to be honest, uh, though, as well that uh, people have been kind of uh, leaning into more. 
Because I do think there are a lot of somber weapons that people have been kind of either shying away from or just completely ignoring when they're very usable, uh, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, there are going to be some players that are going to stumble on a weapon that they just kind of give a chance to and then see that it actually does quite well in bingo specifically. You know, it's not always good for speed running maybe. It's not always good for uh, like other challenge runs. But in, win in bingo specifically... It might be like, oh, this is actually kind of a decent weapon to, to run with. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some new weapon options for the players in general. Yeah, I thought uh, Rose's axe was pretty cool. Last match, that was that was yeah. fun to see. I yeah. haven't really ever used that weapon before, so it was. I mean, it was also really cool to see it literally just melt Borealis. We literally saw the damage difference between that and the Lord Sworn, and it was like night and day, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I hundred percent agree. Rose's axe was used a little bit in season two. But uh, not to the extent that I'd like it to be used. But it was still really, really nice to see. And here we are starting the match now for the players. 10-second countdown here. All of them currently on creation screen. And here is the board. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Boom. There we go. Uh, I don't know. This is kind of uh, this is kind of interesting. Smithing Stone 16 weapon. Ritual Ponce is a center square. Got a little bit kind of a of money God dump bosses. here. Yeah. Got some, got some, actually, yeah, that's a really nice lineup here, this diagonal, the Godskin Noble and the Kill Four Bosses with the word God in it. Um, that might be kind of nice. Yeah, I think what we're going to get here, what I've seen a lot in the practice matches is, uh, I've seen Adef being the one to sacrifice his runes, so I think we're going to see a 30 int here, maybe. Um, yeah. Not too sure about that, but that would be, you know, that'd be a nice little development for column four as well as row one um sacred flask also on the board there i could totally see that to be honest i could totally see um adef doing the uh Halic tree into 30 in play right away um that is a very common strategy as we saw in last match when aggie went straight for the uh 50 000 memory of grace rune uh move uh i, I could totally see that for the 30 in tier as well uh, if you look at row two, we actually have uh, an underground. We have uh, Valiant Gargoyles and Shafia's Champs. Uh, I don't really know. It's not super high priority this game because we don't have like a Radon or um, we don't have, you know, any of these squares that would kind of incentivize an underground. But uh, it'd be cool to see, you know, some, you know, what runners have came up with for Gargs or Fia's Champs. That, that, that could be pretty cool. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um... I think it might be rushed first. Uh, uh, obviously, the 30 nth, as we've already talked about that. But also, uh, Spirit Ash plus 4. I kind of expect that to be off the board pretty quickly. Smithing Stone 16 is actually, surprisingly, a pretty rushable square. Uh, going for all the Smithing Stone pickups is, it doesn't take too long at all. So I'm expecting that to be taken off the board very quickly as well. Um, and then, honestly, this is kind of like a mid to late game-ish board. There's going to be a lot of prep. There is Sleeping Golem, which is pretty quick. But for the most of it... It's going to be, I would say, a mid to late game. There's going to go straight to the two to three square rushes into everyone prepping. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I also I see a I see a Vike here. I don't I haven't seen much Vike. I, I think people are trying to stay away from that square. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. Because we have a Vike, we have a Morgot, and we also have a Misbegotten Crusader. So definitely a lot of uh, a lot of setup here is going to happen at the start of the run after these uh, the rush squares, obviously. And so we're going to see in action uh, that dynamic we, we're, we've, we've been talking about all day, where you know one player goes for the rush squares while the other one sets up for two or three, and then while that one you know executes on the second and third square, the other guy can set up. We're really going to see how this team chemistry plays out because this really is a board where you're going to have to work that. It's it's going to be playing the long game, right? So yeah. No, I I definitely we'll agree here. Uh, and yeah, it looks like the start of the match here. Everyone's starting with somewhat of a different class actually. Um, Chris starting with uh, what seemed to be a halberd. Zoodle starting with the curved club here. Uh, NPT starting with the uh, the tree guardian uh, spear. So everyone kind of picked a different oh. stat line to go with. And sometimes that's actually really, really good. Is like have your partner go with a stat line, like for the th the 30 in square, for example, and be like, okay, you know what? This stat line has like really high intelligence. Don't care about the weapon. Just like don't even worry about it. Just get the class that has the highest intelligence. So you, you pay the least amount of money 
to get that 30 intelligence square. Um, right. And then just go for whatever else uh, from the round table. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, we also have for Team Zoom, we have the runner-up from Season 2. We have Nuclear Pasta Tom. I'm really excited to see what he has prepared for this season because he, he is like a routing god. When it comes to these challenge runs, speed runs, mm. you know, bingo, he is a routing god, and he is usually one of the first people to develop a very, very efficient route for these squares. So I'm really, really excited to see what he has in store for us. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm definitely looking forward to um, what everyone kind of come up with. And like, and like you said last match, though, too, uh, each bingo board is just different. So it's always routing on the fly, which is a skill of its own. It's like, okay, what what can I do this game? Where should I go this game? And sometimes when you start uh, practicing um, like bingo a lot, you'll start to see like these micro synergies of routing that you've done in prior games. So you'd be like, okay, I can do this route again. Uh, with some some minor adjustments, you know, it's like these small tools in your toolbox type situations. You're like, okay, I've done this little uh, like combo before for these squares. I could do that again and do it for uh, these other squares instead on this board. Um, so I think that's uh, always really really fun to watch for sure. Right, right, yeah, and I mean because it's like it's always a new route every game. Like you'll see these runners kind of hesitate and like think about the routing and then remember it again. Sometimes when you make a bad routing decision, it's not always like a bad idea to just like double down i know that that sounds kind of bad but like sometimes when you double down on a bad routing decision you can kind of salvage it like a tiny bit but you're still going to obviously have like a net time loss but you'll see these players when they get stuck and they, they're thinking about the routing they don't panic and that's kind of like what you want right you don't want to panic when you make a bad routing decision um so you'll see when they're kind of like you know wiggling around, you know, using their map, looking around, and they just finally commit to a play. So none of that's all you really need to do is just commit to your play and then maybe just get one or two squares. You know, maybe you're a little bit behind, but at least you're not just hesitating and doing nothing, right? Yeah. And it looks like Ada here going for that uh, that weapon check that no one else did last match, I believe. Uh, getting the Bastard Sword here. Not the greatest option, but Definitely honestly... Definitely not what I expected. But. Not the worst. And uh, we also had Zoodle already, by the way, killing Kale. So he's already eyeballing that Blythe Square that we had from last match as well, uh, which is going to be in row one, column three here. You know, summon Blythe for Bloodhound Knight. Uh, so it looks like Zoodle's going to be taking that square under his wing. Yep. Uh, we did not see a Soldier of Godric, which I found kind of interesting because it is a god boss. But I, I suppose that getting, um, getting one of these rushable squares makes more sense right now. Yeah, and uh, Tom here, it looks like Tom's is going straight for upgrades. Like I said, that Smithing Stone 16 uh, square is going to be taking very, very quickly here. Tom getting those Smithing 1s and immediately pointing to Shifra, getting Smithing 2s and 3s down here, yep. and then going to go immediately to uh, Inner Ionia, grab the Smithing 4s and the Smithing 5s, and then go straight to Castle Soul uh, in, in Mountaintops uh, to grab that, that last Smithing 6. Yeah. I mean, it's a long game, so Tom is playing for the board, which is, you know, the smart thing to do. Upgrading a weapon now is going to pay off later when he doesn't have to do that, and it nets him a square, so. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Adif here is going to go for the Urtree Grazing Hill. Um, why? Oh, he's going for his 10 Sacred Flask Charges, which is row 3. So he's just mm. really prioritizing those Sacred Flask Charges uh, as his square. Um and he's got a really, really efficient route for this, too. I think he's probably the fastest uh, at doing this, to be honest. Uh, this and the uh, plus seven uh, flask square as well, which is not on the board this time. But he normally does like a little bit of combo for the both of them. Uh, very, very quick. Yeah, I mean, this is what we were saying in the pregame. Uh, Adef here is doing the rush square while Chris is setting up his character, right? Yep. So kind of delegating that responsibility onto Adef makes it so much easier on Chris to work towards, you know, some more combat oriented squares because he's going to be the one with the uh, the plus, plus 16 weapon um, assuming, you know, one of them, either Chris or Tom is going to have to win the, the square, but the other will still have an upgraded weapon, right? So uh, ADF here is going to probably take time to set up after doing these rush squares like uh, 10 circuit flash charges um, but we'll, 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 see, we'll see what he decides to go with. I don't think he's picked up another weapon yet. I think he's straight up just been rushing this square which is totally fine yeah i'm uh, a little surprised you though chris kind of behind to be honest mpt already grabbing the smithing force here 
and uh, is going to have to either quit out or just memory of grace. He's going to be memory of gracing uh, to get out of the combat and then go straight to uh, the uh, Celia tunnel to grab these smithing fives here. Uh, Chris doing the same thing, but a little bit behind here, at least by like 30 seconds. This is going to be a snipe ready by Tom. But honestly, even if it is a snipe, he's still going to have a, uh, Chris is still going to have a nice weapon online, like you said. So at the end of the day, if you lose a square, it's not all lost, which is nice. Yeah, and I mean, uh, like I was saying before, like I feel like Tom has already accounted for this. He hasn't used his lands between rune yet. Chris has used his, but you know, if you're Tom and you're you know you're routing this in your head you realize, oh, if I'm going to be grabbing these stones, I'm probably going to get put into combat, and I can't quit out, right, because that's a time loss. So he had that in mind, and he's able to Memory of Grace because he didn't yeah. pop any of his runes. So that's a very smart play. Yeah, and uh, here we have already the Blythe Summon, by the way, uh, from Zoodle here, uh, fighting the uh, Bloodhound Knight. I remember doing a lot of damage to that Curved Club. The poise on this is fantastic. Gets another stagger ready. Blythe, as useless as usual, just stands there and uh, probably doesn't even get a single well, hit. He tried in. to help. Ah, I mean, he tried to help, but the uh, the iframes kicked in. Ah, it, it, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. Effort. Every single time I've done this square, Blythe just stands there and just like monologues. <laughs> Uh, but very nice square here from Team Zoom already, grabbing the first square on the board. Bloodhound Knight while summoning Blythe. Very, very nice. And here it is. Tom now getting that Castle Soul skip down. This is a, a little bit of a tricky skip, but like once you know it, like you can't forget it. Very, very nice. GG's here from Tom. Very nice skip. Yeah. Goes straight down. Going to grab that Smithing 6 and go straight for that plus 16 weapon. And uh, uh, Chris here, uh, member of gracing out of Celia Tunnel with the Smithing 5s. And I'm probably going to do the same thing. Oh, there goes his land between rune. There it is. Smithing 6 here from Tom. Does get grabbed here. Um, it is early Valentine's Day for Tom. Getting some nice kisses uh, from the dumpling heads. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know what other runes uh, Tom grabbed. I don't think the 3,000 will be enough. Lens between rune. But uh, I think he wins this, right? I think I'm pretty sure he's like way ahead on the Smithing Stone weapon. He's probably going to head to Halleck Tree, get some money. Okay, a classic move. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Adef here is finishing up oh! his... Chris here getting oh. annihilated by the skeleton in Mountaintops. Still got the runes. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And now Chris is going to go for that Castle Soul skip as well. And Tom now actually currently in Look how ahead yeah. he is. He's, yeah. he's like he's like 30 plus seconds ahead right now, if you consider loading screens. Yeah. Chris trying to do the fast, <laughs> trying to do the fast soul skip. Uh, completely <laughs> does not even jump with his horse, just slides down into the ravine. Had to reset there. The look on his face just explains it all. Yeah, no, if you don't line it up, like, perfectly the way Tom did, where you, you take your time with your character and line it up correctly and then mount it, but just try to, like, bulldoze it the way uh, Chris is uh, doing it here. Um, it's just not as... Oh, no. His horse rate took too much fall damage. So oh. Like, that's terrible. Yeah, so so your your horse will actually, for some reason, it'll it'll store fall damage. Like, it yeah. you, your horse won't get healed. So, yeah, that is an unlucky, unlucky mistake there. And I uh, should have it now. Doesn't he was not close enough to the edge? Quits out yet again here, but NPT already at Hugh. Going to be selling those runes and upgrading his weapon to plus sixteen. Should be marking this here very soon. There it is. Say, oh, ten sacred flash charges here from Adef already. Only ten minutes into the match and already has ten sacred flash charges. That's huge. And he yeah, is. That, oh, there is very fast. There is sacred flash plus tw uh, plus seven. Uh, so it's. The, First damn square on the board. I didn't even see that. Um, so I'm expecting Adef to go for that as well. And it looks like Zudo's going to be going for the Sleeping Golem here. Yeah. Um, as we head into this early mid, I don't really know what the uh, what the play is to pivot into after. Um, I, I assume Tom has a plan. He has a plan for you know what he's going to try to fight because he does have a plus 16 weapon. So he's going to obviously be utilizing that. I, I don't really know what exactly he's, uh, you know, looking to go for, but he is heading up Stormhill to Stormhill Shack as Zoodle here is taking out the Sleeping Golem. 
I assume that uh, the harder bosses are going to be delegated to Tom since he does have an upgraded weapon as of yep. right now. Same thing with Chris on the other side. Chris is going to be the one that's going to be fighting bosses for the other team. Yeah, Chris grabbing that Sombra 9 real quick. And also a little bit of extra cash. Going to drop down and get that 50,000 as well. Zoodle here going to be knocking out this golem uh, multiple times. Going for those reposts in the chest. And Adef, I believe, is just going to go ahead and get as many Sacred Tears as he possibly can. And get that Sacred Flask plus, t uh, plus 7. Which I think is good. Because like the line, the column 1 line that Blue Team is potentially pushing for has got Gargs in it. It's got Elemer in it. It's got Tops Key. These are all things that kind of take a little bit of time. They, yeah, you, so you can't uh, just do them very quickly, you know what I mean? If Positive Vibe gets ahead on that, that's a really scary line for uh, Team Zoom. If they if they had made no progress on that on that column, like that's that is very time consuming, like you said. That that requires Redon, uh, that requires, you know, academy access. So that's like that would be huge if they would push that bingo line. Um, as Zuda here having a little bit of trouble with the golem. You hate to see that. He, th I think he had a little bit of uh, troubles getting the repost there. Um, trying to get this back under control. This is very scary with those AOEs from the uh, the sleeping golem on yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> and uh, he finally gets the knockdown. Okay. Chris, by the way, marked intelligence. He used all that money to just stat dump into intelligence right away, which I'm a little surprised by. I thought he was going to use that money to just like get, get his character online, but instead uh, went for that stat dump right away, blocking that row one, which I think was a good move, to be honest, just to make sure that they don't have that threat to deal with. And Zoodle here, killing that sleeping golem, getting that third square for Team Zoom, um, and activating row four, column five, which is going to be really, really nice. It looks like Tom is heading to the Celia Everjail. I think he... Is he going for Black Knife Assassin armor? He's going or... for Black Knife Assassin kills, actually. Kill two Black Knife Assassins here. You go into the okay. Ever Jail, and he's going to try and cheese them uh, down a cliffside. <laughs> Which I saw Josh practicing right before their match as well. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but there he is dead. Um, and he will have to reset oh my that. God. That's but you, you kind of like take them, I guess, to the edge, and they slide off somehow. Um... But uh, kind of like NPCs. Yeah, kind of like NPCs. Correct, correct, correct. Ada, if you're checking the roundtable shop, looks like he picked up the Omen Cleaver. That's going to be his weapon of choice for the run. It feels um, not a bad choice at all. Yeah, absolutely. It's got a, that innate bleed. It's got wild yeah. strikes. Pretty solid weapon overall. Yeah, that that would have been um, also really good for poise as well. Really, really solid weapon. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Chris is actually using the same weapon, too. Omen Killer. Uh, and then Chris is now going for, I believe, the Black Knife Assassins as well, currently in Consecrated Snowfield. I believe he's walking or going towards the the Ordina Everjail here. MPT currently ahead. But as as mentioned, this is a bit of a tricky cheese to pull off. He is currently in position now, standing here at this edge here, just hoping that they slide off. I believe he did get his first one already, or is trying to re-aggro. I'm not too sure. You know, this board is a little bit tricky. I can't see too many uh, synergies here, or at least not many obvious ones. Not obvious ones that strike me for, like, early game. Um, things are a bit more spread out, it looks like. Oh, there we go. That's one of them. Gets one Ghost off. Glove Wart. <laughs> oh, you get 15,000 oh, off that, okay. too. Is it is it 15,000 off of one assassin, or is that just because he picked up his runes? I can't tell. I couldn't tell either. I, I'm pretty sure he got, like, 8,000 in the assassin. I think he's pulling the other one now, too. I, I, I honestly don't know what's going on, because I've never seen this before. Yeah, also, it's the first time I'm seeing it, too. So. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Should be his second one right here. He gets uh, oh. the good RNG for it. Just patiently waiting. Chris decided to go back to uh, the town, by the way, or uh, the Twin Maidens. That should be Tom's second one. Oh, gets the Ghost Glove Wart. There it is. Nice yeah. for Team Zoom here. Four squares to two currently. Also, some nice money in the bank for Tom. That was like, yeah, I think it's 24000 now, which is uh, a decent amount. We're also threatening that column three, I guess. That just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. 
I uh, definitely agree. Definitely agree. Although Vike will be a bit of an issue here. I, I don't think that they're going to rush that anytime soon. Yeah, Unless I someone is say. really comfortable with that fight, then then sure. No, I've been seeing runners lab that, and it, it looks it looks very very tough. Like I don't know, it's the the problem is he does this like this weapon art about halfway through the fight. He'll like do like a storm assault, and then it'll stagger you, and then it'll true combo into the follow up. Which yeah. I've seen runners trying to like route that, and I don't think anyone's really come up with a consistent way yet. Eight of here should be close to Sacred Flask plus seven here, grabbing still all the tears from Weeping. And then possibly grabbing the last one here from Millicent Church. Uh, eight, uh, Chris grabbing the Academy Glintstone. Possibly prioritizing Ritual Pots here at this point. Trying to g get that uh, Column 3 block. That'd be really, really nice. Yeah. Um, looks like Zoodle here picking up some Golden Seeds. Heading through Altus. Um, could he be going for... A possible, not a possible Morga. I don't know what what Zudo's going for right now, but um, that's that's kind of like what I was mentioning before. I just I don't see very many obvious synergies with this board. It looks kind of like a like a long game. Yeah, I'm not too sure either, to be honest. I'm not exactly sure what uh, Zudo is prepping for right now. It might just be. Seals? No, not seals, sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. I guess we'll find out soon enough. As uh, ADEF here doing Celia Skip, a, uh, a common a common spot today for mishaps, it seems like. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not too sure what's uh, what's going on with Celia, but then again, I've been there. I've been there. I know it's I know it's frustrating to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is definitely, it seems like just, just like such a volatile skip. I feel like once you miss it twice, you get in this, like, you get in this sunk cost fallacy where you've already invested time and you've already spent more time than it would have taken to light the fire. So you kind of just get stuck in this mindset of like, oh, I have to go for it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Um... Oh, uh, it's just like pure stubbornness, which I feel like is a very common trait among any Elden Ring player. Is like you just develop stubbornness. I've been like, all right, I'm just gonna keep doing it. I'm just gonna keep doing it. Who cares? Just keep doing it, and just hope for the best at that point. And <laughs> just hope that you can't pull it off without losing your mind. <laughs> is uh, is MPT by the way going for sacred tier, sacred tears for the plat plus plus seven, developing that uh, that diagonal? Uh he might be. He might be. Although he might be prepping for Elmer here too, because like this is the the same direction Elmer is in, so he might actually mm -hmm. go for that column one block. Yeah, it looks like he's going straight for Elmer here. Uh, Chris grabbing another ritual pot and Raya Lucaria. That would be huge. That would that would that would block that diagonal. Um, it would also help block the uh, the column three. They might be going for. Uh, so uh, Team Zoom might be going for something like a, a scatter shot. Oh, Adef here, very nice skip, very nice and smooth there. Good job by him. There that, we was, go. that was that was very very nice. GGS, definitely GGS, very smooth skip. Chris here currently on Red Wolf now. One of the more annoying fights, I feel like, but like once you've learned it, it's not that bad. But like when you initially fight Red Wolf, it is obnoxious. No, especially in a in a bingo match, you know, like you're 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 rushing, so like you have to yeah. make sure that you're being optimal with your swings while at the same time, like not very getting nice. one shotted because you have no health as well. So very very, very nice, nice. Chris. Looks like Zoodle is also working towards uh, ritual pots. I believe this is the uh, Azure side tomb. Oh yeah, very interesting. Is there a? Uh... Why exactly is he doing this one? Am I missing something? Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. There's two here. There's two here, and then there's two in Jarberg, I believe. That, that's probably the play he's going Interesting. for. Interesting. Okay, so he's just... This is a very alternative ritual pot route. I've never seen this one before. 
That makes sense, yeah, though. I've, I've seen a few teams sense. practicing this too. Uh, it's it's a little bit confusing, but once you learn it, I think it's it's pretty straightforward. It's like yeah. two chests, and then you're there. I'm pretty sure. Tom almost dying to one of the pages, one of the scarier mobs in the game, I would say. Uh, but makes his way past them and gets now close to Elmer. Yeah, definitely just rushing that Elmer with the uh, impaling Elmer's thrust. A good play. Uh, tree spear. Yeah, I think Elmer is a good play because he went for that that weapon upgrade. He has a bunch of HP, and just relying on that uh, that raw damage from his sword upgrades um, definitely will be not the quickest fight ever because Elmer is one of those uh, mid game fights, mm -hmm. but. I think he'll be fine. He's got some grease as well. And it looks like uh, we have the ritual pots coming in from Team Zoom. Very nice. Oh, wow. Team, uh, he actually, yeah, he beat him to it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Very, very nice. Let's see that. I want to see the damage I'll put on this magic tree spear. Oh, it does miss the impaling thrust here, though. It's not too bad. This is a plus 16, though. Okay, that impaling thrust is decent damage. Yep. Very, very nice. I, I feel like the, the repost is going to do a lot, too. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's huge. Very nice. Very nice fight here from Tom. So that's going to be a nice For block, sure. but also activating that diagonal, as you mentioned before. So they're going to have Ritual Pots now and Elmer on that diagonal. Very, very nice. And, and they're also threatening a Column 3 at the same time. This is... Very good play from Team Zoom. They are taking full advantage of this spot. Yeah, they have board presence and they have square advantage. It's, it's really cool to see. And that is a plus seven flasks here from Adef now. Um, three squares here for Team Positive Vibes. Oh, streams are lagging a little bit. Give me a second. Sorry. And they're back. I, 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 oh, 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 okay. We're, we're, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. A little bit of technical issues, but we're back. All right, cool. We have Tom here in Yelmir. I don't exactly know. There's, I know there's a Falling Star Beast here. Maybe he's just grabbing the Golden Seed. Not too sure, though, what's going on here. Not too sure either. Yeah, Zoodle dying to the Royal Revenant and Halleck Tree, grabbing some of the money, I believe. And I'm assuming Adef's going for the same, going for some cash, trying to get online. As we mentioned, Tom and Chris got their prep in, and now they're doing things. And now Adef and Zoodle are swapping with their teammates, and now they're getting their prep in and making sure that they can get their own stuff online as well, uh, which I think is always like a, a great uh, dynamic to have as a as a team, to like have those swap outs. Is... Uh... Is NPT going for Noble into Rykard? Is that is that his play? I right could now? totally see that. Yeah, that diagonal could be really, really powerful. Uh, you need capital access for Moog Sewers. So doing Godskin Noble into uh, Rykard is huge because that is two god bosses uh, since it is God Devouring Serpent uh, as the first phase. So that is two god bosses for that square already. And you get the Godskin Noble corner square on top of that. So they're kind of wow. already pushing that diagonal, which is huge. Swapping over to uh, to Team Red here. Everyone kind of just uh, getting set up here really quickly. Zulu kind of figuring out, I guess, what he wants to do next. Okay, uh, Chris here marking return tops is key. Uh, gets another square on the board. Currently four to six. For Team Zoom. And then he goes ahead and kills Tops here for his uh, staff. That way he has uh, the, I think, three staves for collect six unique staves, which is mm. row five. So killing Tops right after completing that line or completing that quest is a really good idea. Saves a little bit of time. It looks like uh, Zuda here is also setting up for Spirit Ash plus four. He's currently in Tombsford right now, uh, grabbing that. Yeah, grabbing those, those glove wart ones. I think, and this is like a really nice move here uh, from Zoodle. I would say is the fact that like he's trying to, pretty much utilize the corner square that Tom's about to get as much as possible. 
So, like, by the time Tom gets Godskin Noble without status effects as a square, Zudo is going to have Spirit Ashes to even promote Column 5 even more already. So they're already taking away counterplay from that column and adding more threat to that as well. Right. Which, I, which I really, really like. It's like Chris here is grabbing some money in the mountaintops. I don't think he's going to go challenge Vike yet. I think this is just for uh, some money. He's actually really, really behind from that 30 in square. Yeah. That's a very, very punishing one. That's almost even more punishing than uh, just throwing away 50k. Because that's that makes your level ups more expensive. So yep, it's a very, very punishing square to go for. Especially early on, too. He's grabbing this grace here, though, and going back to round table, possibly upgrading. Uh, he needed some money, potentially, for that. Uh, Tom, you're going to be going into the Godskin Noble fight. Yeah, and it looks like Zoodle, yeah, is just prepping his uh, Omen Killer weapon, going to be grabbing those smithing fours that are in, 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 in inner Ionia. Jesus. Uh, this is great team play here from, from Team Zoom. Because... Uh, if, if you remember, Zoodle, he rushed Bloodhound Knight, and then uh, he went for the Sleeping Golem. So that was like a huge time sink, and he, he would have been really behind on his weapon. But uh, now Tom is kind of buying some, him some time by going for these more aggressive squares, like uh, Godskin Noble and uh, Rykard. So we'll see how this uh, Godskin fight goes for Tom. Definitely not bad damage at all here from Tom as well. Again, that 16 tree uh, spear is really coming in handy. It's taking a lot of damage, though. He's got to be a little careful um, to make sure he doesn't waste all of his flasks. His phase 2 is a little bit more annoying. Just has to make sure that uh, he gets those impaling thrusts in. And honestly, you can stand pretty far away from the enemy and use an impaling thrust and still reach. Like, the reach on that weapon art is really, really nice. Um, yeah. so if, you, if you just want to wait out attacks and just only impaling thrust, like that's completely reasonable. The mana for that is not too expensive. You also may be able to, uh, in second phase versus Noble, um, when he goes into second phase and starts rolling, he could get him behind a pillar and potentially cheese him with impaling thrust behind the pillar, but uh, we'll see how that goes. As Chris here is actually deciding to challenge Vike, this is going to be a one-shot if he gets hit by literally anything. So this is uh, yeah. very, very scary to go for. But you know, if you're if you're Chris, I feel like you kind of have to go for the block here at this on point. On this, uh, yeah, kind of don't really have a choice. Well, he could go but, for yeah. five bosses with tree in their name, but I think what he's thinking is like they're already going for that. They already have priority on that. I don't have any prep done. I'm gonna go for the long term block rather than going for the immediate next best block, which is tree bosses. And I'm gonna go ahead and just go for Vike instead, just kind of deal with it, which I think it, it makes a lot of sense. He does get tagged here from Vike, does die, which really, really sucks. Yeah. Um, but I, I understand why he would go for Vike at this point. And there it is, that kill from Tom there on the Godskin Noble. Very nice fight from Tom. Gets that corner square now. Now they're activating the diagonal. They're activating column three. They're going to be activating column five. They have so many threats that they could play off and just, like, really be in Team Blue's face and be like, which one are you going to pick? We're going to go for the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, the bike play kind of does make sense if you're in Chris's shoes, because I think it does give you a decent chunk of runes, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. So he could be potentially coming back a little bit into this game. But again, he needs to, to get this like now, or else uh, Team Zoom will continue to snowball their lead. Yeah, it looks, looks like Adef might be going for tree bosses now. It did kill that uh, Urtree Watchdog there with his Omen Killer. Chris getting absolutely wombo comboed from that Vike uh, yeah. Storm Assault, as we uh, as you mentioned that before. Um, this is definitely looking very, very tough here for, for Team Puzzle Vibes at the moment. Tom here now going for staves, by the way. Not going for uh, god bosses. Not finishing that square. He's like, right, I'm going to go for staves now instead. That just seems quicker. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. There, you can literally get three in Kaled. You can get uh, Gravity Staff, Staff of Loss, and then the one from the boss fight. So, that's a pretty quick one. The nice thing about Vike at the very least is you get some free damage in early on because he walks out, you get to do a free charged R2, then he buffs himself, you get a free charged R2. And Chris there again gets the Storm Assault immediately oh and immediately dies right away to Vike again. 
you, you really cannot be aggressive. You have to be completely defensive with the Vike. That's the one thing with Vike that I've learned personally doing this square over and over and over again is you only punish once he's attacked. You never like try to get a hit in to stagger him out of attack because he will do the storm assault and you'll just die. It's it's terrible. It's 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 really really tough. The only play that I can think of is, you know, obviously he can't do this because he spent all of his runes on intelligence. But if you have like a two-handed weapon like this that gets hyper armor, you can hyper armor through the storm assault like the uh, the wind portion. But uh, you have to like you know be able to also roll the follow up. So that I mean that's kind of the only play that I see. And also you can't really do that play because the um, on this low HP, I think even just the wind <laughs> is able to is enough to kill him. Vike going for those very mean running R2 moves on Chris here. Oh, and Chris is dead yet again. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but that is brutal. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is that is a rough one for sure. <laughs> Oh, Definitely uh, a little bit of sunk cost here, if you're Chris. A little bit of uh, frustration with that square because, you know, you, that's the one you chose to go for, and then it doesn't work out, and it doesn't work out again, and then you kind of feel stuck there. I, th I feel like every player has been there before. Yeah, 100%. But this is also the thing. Like, Yeah, column three is is really tough, but at some point, do you just give that up and go for your own line? You know, like that's what I was talking about last match where it's okay. You know what? You're threatening Vike, for example, as like your bingo line. Go ahead, deal with Vike. I'm going to go ahead and do another bingo line with my T partner instead and uh, not even worry about wasting my time on the square. But instead, uh, you know, they're deciding to, to try and actually go for this block, which I don't think necessarily think is a bad move. It's just, it's such a high risk move. It's, it's insanely risky. As, as there's, we see now. there's two plays in particular that kind of, uh, I think, really threw off Team Positive vibes. It was the Ritual Pots that Zoodle, you know, came out of nowhere and stole that one. And then also the Elmer. Those were two really pivotal squares, I feel, in this match. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, Tom here are going for, I believe, God Bosses now. Um, Zoodle did get that Spirit Ash plus four, by the way. Currently eight to four here for Team Zoom. Uh, so they do have that column three, uh, column five, and diagonal uh, currently uh, working for them, which is just insane pressure. That is so much pressure. You don't know what to pick pretty much at this point. If you're on, on Team Positive Vibes, you don't know what to pick because they could go for anything at this point. They could just not go for any of their lines either is the crazy part. Yeah. They could just like ignore all three lines and just be like, you know what, we're just going to go for other stuff. You, you go ahead, you know, rack your brain on, like, which one we're going for, and we're not going to go for any of them. I think the play here, I think they're, I think Team Zoom is going to send somebody underground because we do have, we have Fias, we have Gargoyles. Um, so I, I do feel like that does threaten that, that row two a little bit more. So what they might do is they might actually set up three different bingos and just choose the one that... Uh, the other team does not decide to, to block, right? So, Yeah. I think Tom here is working on his uh, second god boss because he killed uh, yeah. Godskin Noble, so this will be number two. And then what you could do is do Soldier of Godric and then God Devouring Serpent to finish that off. Or, you know, you could, uh, you could do like Goldfroy. I don't know. I don't really know what his play is going to be. No, I, I could I could totally agree with that. Gold Devour, uh, God Devouring Serpent, and then also uh, Rick would be the quickest, and it would also play into Capital Access for Moog Sewer in that regard. Yep. Looks like Zoodle here is going to be going for Celia Tunnel, going for Celia Tunnel Skip. Gets it first try. Very nice skip here from Zoodle. Very, very nice. Um, does he need the Sombra 4? I'm not too sure. Going to kick down that ladder, though. Um... And he's going to go straight for Falling Star. He's going to be grabbing that Cyberstone Bellbearing 1 and 2, which is column 5, row 5 square at the bottom right. Um, going to be pushing that column 5 a little bit more here for, uh, for for a bingo threat. Yeah, so it looks like Tom here is going to be going for another god boss. And then maybe when he gets that, he might go underground. As uh, I think... Is ADEF working on uh, Somberstone as well? Is this the uh, the Crystallian duo that drops yeah. the Yeah, Somber he is, two? actually. 
So this will be so, this will be very interesting on uh, who's going to get yeah. the square actually because they're they're both technically starting at the same time. So this is anyone's square at this point. So Adif might be able to actually snag this from Zoodle if he gets some good RNG on these fights. I mean, that's at least something. If they can get that and then, you know, by some miracle, Vike goes down, that is two bingo threats off the board. Yeah. So that that, that would be kind of huge if uh, Adef can get this. Might swing the momentum back in their favor. The only problem then is Moog Sewers because I guarantee you Tom is going to get uh, four god bosses before anybody else. He already has two in the bag. He's going for Rick right now. It's going to be his third god boss. So they're going to have Moog Sewers. No one has killed a Remembrance boss yet from Team Blue. Uh, team positive vibes here. And Adef actually getting discus oh. here. Oh, that is that is tough. That is tough. Yeah, it looks like Tom here is gonna be killing his uh his third god boss. I don't know guys. What do you guys think? Think he's got this? Nice little one shot impaling thrust. <laughs> and then uh going straight to uh Rikert here. Yeah, it's his fourth god boss. That makes a lot of sense for sure. Switching over here to Team Positive Vibes. Hey, you know what? At least they're staying true to their name. For how much bullshit they had to deal with, they're still smiling. You know what I mean? They're still smiling. At least they're still smiling, yep. And it looks <laughs> like Chris here has, has pivoted off of the uh, the Vike, which is obviously for the better. Um, working on staves, I believe? Yeah. Grabbing that stuff. Loss. Adef here in his second attempt on the uh, Duo Crystallian here. Um, but it looks like, I don't know if he has the, the somber one. I don't think he killed the falling star beast. I think Zoodle has a little bit of an advantage here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Zoodle's definitely a little bit ahead and Zoodle is actually taking care of, I would say the harder fight too, because falling star beast, mm -hmm. uh, versus, uh, Crystallian duo falling star beast is definitely the trickier one to pull off. So Zoodle having that one already done, he's, he's got a little bit of an edge here for sure on that square. Mm-hmm. Chris here trying to grab his fifth stave, I believe. And then he should just need one more. And then he gets that uh, row five block at the very least, which is going to be really nice. Column four is still open for Team Blue to try and push that as a bingo line. But it will be blocked here very soon once Tom gets that four bosses with uh, the word God in it. Nice fight here from Adef. Does get the Crystallian duo. Should move towards uh, Funk Star Beast right after this. Zoodle here literally opening the door to the Crystallian duo. So definitely a little bit ahead here. Um, that'll be kind of sad if this gets sniped. Um, but yeah, Zoodle here going to the fight. While uh, Tom is going to be leveling up first and then heading into the uh, God Devouring Serpent. Actually doing the Giga Chad health build. Love to see it. Love to see it. 40 <laughs> yeah. health. I mean, the requirements like, I, for a Serpent Hunter luckily are nothing. So you get to just, like, fully commit to health if you really want to. And the tree uh, spear, I think he uh, has it to where um, he just doesn't... He has the he meets the dex requirement and the strength he just has to two-hand. So he's been really um, holding off on uh, dunking too much uh, money into stats and just into health, which, I, yeah, like, like I said, a really good idea. Well, it also, it also builds towards that Vike. I, I think he might be uh, doing a Vike eventually in this match because, you know, you need a lot of health to survive the, uh, the Storm Assault. Uh, yeah, It looks possibly. like while we were talking about that, uh, Chris did pick up the unique stave, so they are at least on the board. They're at least building a little bit of momentum. Um, but it looks like Zoodle has gotten the Somberstone, Bell Bearing 1 and 2, uh, threatening that Column 5. All they need is Fias Champs. But it looks like one of the two will be heading underground for that or they might just sit on it they might just sit on it and they might just say hey like we're gonna threaten this bingo you guys have to come block us and then yeah. do other stuff yeah no I, I agree i agree yeah so you have that threat of vike and fia's champs this is honestly kind of mean from team zoom to be honest is going for the two lines that have horrible uh options to uh, to block at this point it's like, hey, go for Fia's Champs if you really want to get rid of that uh, Column 5. Oh, it's go for Vike if you wanna really want to get rid of Column 3. These are not very fun fights at all. Um, so they, they have a lot of uh, power in that regard in that fight for sure. It looks like that we Adif also... is actually going for Tree Bosses here instead. He did get that Watchdog already, now going for Tree Sentinel. Um, so he might, going for, might be going for that Column 3 block with uh, Tree Bosses instead. Yeah, absolutely. We also have another route 
We have a Morgoth on the board, so what we could see is we could see a uh, a Morgoth into a Sewer Moog, actually, into a Fia's Champs, you know, into a Valiant Gargoyle. So that is a huge synergy there, actually. So we may be seeing some capital access as Zoodle is heading uh, to Redmain Castle, taking the teleporter. Um, I don't know who is going to be on that duty, but that is definitely something to consider. Uh, that is a that is definitely a, a very powerful route. Yeah. No, I agree, I agree. Chris here, I think, is prepping for Moog Sewers, actually, killing Ranala right away. And uh, might go for Godric right after this, uh, trying to go for that diagonal block. That would make a lot of sense, and honestly, it would be a really, really good play. Um, so I really hope he does do that. Uh, Adif here, I believe, going for the Urchery. Going for that nice little skip here they can do. If he lands it correctly. Very nice! That's, that's not easy. Oh, I, I can't do that. No, uh, I'm not consistent on that one either. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, you have to, like, angle it perfectly uh, and, like, make sure the camera's in the right position for that uh, for that skip to work. Uh, Chris here about to kill Ranala while Tom is currently on Rikard trying to deal with the very fun ultimate move from Rikard being chased by a bunch of skulls. <laughs> Skull emoji. Oh, he could he could possibly okay. He's gonna be careful here. Okay, nice, very nice. Should be able to finish this uh, fight off here very quickly. Oof. And Zoodle yeah. now currently in Radon Arena. I think he's prepping for Fias Champs slash Valiant Gargoyles with this uh, with this move. Yeah, has he has he already killed a Remembrance Boss? Or this is his first one. This would be his first one, I believe. And there it is, that square. Four god bosses from Tom. Very, very nice. Oh, there's a Ronala square. I didn't even notice that, actually. There is the uh, four summons from Ronala. And Chris did get the four summons. Going to go for that last hit here. There it is. There it is. <laughs> always got to hold your breath for that last second on Ronala. There's always yeah. the opportunity for her to just pull out the the random like uh whatever you call that star shower those do so much damage the fun part is uh, when she goes into her moon attack right as she's about to die and then you just have to wait out the moon oh yeah for like That's 10 great. to 15 seconds then you can finally kill her looks like zoodle's got the whole squad here fighting radon we got we got pop friend we got blithe we have okina you got the whole squad yeah, these guys can be really helpful or are really, really annoying, depending on how your RNG is, to be honest. Because either they can deal a lot of poise damage with you and make sure that uh, Radon bleeds, or Alexander would just sit there, not do anything, and then you can't get to Radon because he's just blocking the path, which I've had happen. <laughs> and that's just yeah. so annoying. Like, I want to hit this boss, but your fat head is in the way. Could you please <laughs> move to the side? <laughs> I personally would not also summon Okina because he can actually steal your bleed proc and it does less damage than your own. Oh yeah, that's true. That's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. There he goes. Nice fight from Zoodle here though. Kills Radon. Tom now going straight to Capital here. I think he's going for that Moog Sewers bingo line. Uh Team Zoom currently ten square or ten points to six versus Team Positive Vibes. And it looks like that Chris might be going for the Misbegotten Crusader here. Uh, for some money and maybe some freeze grease. That'd make a lot of sense. Anyways, let me move over to Team Blue here. Yeah, maybe maybe trying to reattempt Vike at some point. Um, gonna face his demons with some freeze grease. And if you know the Misbegotten Crusader fight, it's not too bad, but this is still kind of an annoying fight. Um, Misbegotten Crusader is, I would say, on crack for how much it, or how aggressive it is and uh, swinging at you, making sure to not give you a single breathing moment to heal. So you got to really know the attacks that are coming out of Misbegotten Crusader. Um, the Roar has a really large AoE, and then he's got also that uh, that Sacred Blade attack that can come out that can one-shot you pretty much, especially at Chris's health bar. It's definitely going to one-shot you. Yeah. Here we can see the 30 int still playing a role. Um... Someone pointed out that I, I they think that uh, the 30 in or 30 faith or 30 arcane those squares finally kind of feel like bait, especially in uh, in late game boards. And I have to, I have to actually agree with that because I was doing some practice boards and it really just threw off like the whole run. 
when you you know when you invest that much money into one stat and uh yeah. it just it just doesn't pay off like may, maybe you know you can somehow make money late game for that square but it's it's it's, it's a super awkward one because it's very hard to do late game it's also it also throws off your entire early game so it's just like i don't really know when the right time would be like maybe you get lucky you get like a moon veil or something but uh here we have chris heading into the misbegotten crusader fight while npc is fighting a draconic tree sentinel oh and tom actually dies to dts that is wow yeah this is the thing i was talking about this is where you know uh players don't necessarily have to like learn the fight necessarily, but like have to relearn it from doing the cheese so often. This is something that I think is kind of exciting. Is is uh you know you you can't just get easy cap laxus anymore. Like you have to deal with this fight now, which is a is a annoying fight. I remember honestly like on my first playthrough, this was like one of the hardest bosses to be honest. This guy hit like a truck, and I was using hook yeah. claws. It was terrible. Yeah, Draconic, <laughs> he's like he's like one of your first like build checks, I would say. Yeah. Of a run that it's kind of the whole reason why the uh, any percent glitchless route uses the Bloodhound's Fang now is because the Fang is like not super great for DTS. So like being able to knock him off the map is huge, and obviously like that being like not an option here, really tests the uh the strength of you know your build. Like you want to get in the capital, you got to get past him first. Yeah. I agree. And Zoodle here, by the way, already underground, getting ready for Mimic Deer, possibly moving then into uh, Gargoyles. Uh, I think that's like really good from Team Zoom here. Really sep like not separating, but uh, diversifying their portfolio, if you want to say so, um, yeah. on this board, making sure that they can cover their grounds in any way possible. Yep. Um, do we know how close, by the way, ADEF is on uh, Tree Bosses? I think he's coming up on it. I'm not too sure, but he did die to the tree once and does die to it again from that golden land attack. Um, that's a annoying attack to deal with, especially, dude, this is like the one thing I don't like about Earth Tree Avatars is the surrounding pots when you're trying to deal with the stupid golden land attack. And every time you try to like just run, run it out, you like run into a pot and then you're just stuck there. And then the golden land just absolutely yeah, demolishes yeah. you. MPT here, though, killed DTS, now currently in capital. Going to go for that Suramog bingo line. Chris here, still on Misbegotten Crusader. Almost dead, though. Make sure I'm clicking on the right one here. There we go. Got to be careful. That spin attack does get the nice rolls here. He's got to make sure that he doesn't get hit by anything. He probably will die by it with one hit. Yeah, the tricky part about these uh, these enemies here, these uh, Misbegotten, Oof. is that they, they, they get hyper armor. Like when they two end their sword or when they stomp, they get hyper armor. So Chris here able to get the stun lock off and finishing off the square. Very nicely done for Chris. Gets the Ardovis's great sword, but sadly does not have the money to make that weapon uh his new weapon of choice. Uh that is a bit of a you know, high stat dump in faith, so there is that. Zoodle here finishing off the Mimic tier. Oh. It looks like he's heading towards uh, Gargs now, I believe. Um, and then probably making a play into Champs. And then we have, uh, I think Tom is going for Sewers, right? And then, you know, if by some miracle that gets sniped, he has Morgoth still. So Tom here has a lot of plays. Zoodle here has a lot of plays. Um, I do have to say... Uh, from both teams here, by the way, it is from Positive Vibes. They're they're coming back. It's ten to eight now. Uh, Absolutely. With with Adef grabbing the Tree Bosses Square just now, and then also Chris grabbing Misbegotten Crusader and the Renala Square. Like they're bringing it back. Like that's still like yeah. insane. Uh, yeah. for and that, that road two, that road two is now gone for uh, Team Zoom. Road yeah. two is not a threat anymore. They're bringing it back. Uh, you know, at the very least on the board to have some presence. I think is absolutely huge. Um, this Moog Sewers, though, I feel like is going to make or break, obviously, this whole game. With, right now, no one really contesting it, uh, besides Tom. Uh, this seems to be possibly the winning square for, for, for Team Zoom. Yeah, and even, even if that one got taken away, there's still, uh, Morgoth for him. There's also still, uh, Rykard's Great Rune as well, because he took out Rykard earlier. Yep. As well as Fia's champs that I think Zoodle's working on right now. So they have a lot of insurance going for them, I would say. Yeah. So 
definitely yeah. still in their favor, but uh, Team Positive Vibes definitely mounting a pretty good comeback considering where we were, let's say, like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I agree. Definitely agree. Not in a comeback in the way of, like, they're going to, like, turn it around and completely win the match, but at the very least, you know, turning around the, the slow momentum of the early game and turning into a very nice, fast-paced mid-game for themselves. Yeah. Which I think is really nice. And if you're working on Dragonheart bosses, Tom here currently going through the sewers. Zoodle, I think, that just wild prepping. Wild work. Yeah. It's really, really nice. Especially if you landed on the dragon's head in Wild Strike, it's mm -hmm. crazy strong. Yeah, it looks like Zoodle is going back underground. Um, we'll see what he's work. Excuse me, what he's working on now. Uh, Tom here is actually getting close to the Sewer Moog objective. I, I don't think he's being contested. I, I, I think this might just be the beginning of the end, depending on how that goes for him. Yeah, I agree. Zoodle here also on Valent Gargoyles. So even if they do potentially lose that, he would uh, Zoodle would have priority on Valent Gargoyles and Fias Champs. So that would still be possibly, uh, you know, 12 squares for uh, Team Zoom in that regard. Looks like Tom here is going to be setting up the skip. There's actually a really cool skip here that you can get from... Uh, you can land this little platform here, and you can actually skip right down to the elevator, and you skip all of that, like, annoying, uh, like, running section through all, like, like, the tubes and everything. Yeah. Very, very nice skip here. There we go. Very nice. Yep. It's also very fun to do, to be honest. I really like yeah. that skip. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Very nice sewer skip. Yeah, I mean, it looks like NPT just showed up to play this match. Definitely had a game plan going into it. Definitely used the planning phase well and uh, executed on his plan. So it was really cool to see. Yeah. Nice dagger there from Zoodle on the Gargoyles, by the way. The edge does decent amount of damage here, too. I think this is still a plus 16 uh, Omen Killer Cleaver. And uh, summons the Jellyfish to help <laughs> out with, uh, with the Gargoyles. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to Honestly, me. Honestly, not a bad idea. Try and tank some hits, you Jelly. You spent time getting the plus 4 Spirit Ash. You may as well pull it out here. Maybe take some aggro. I, the jelly's actually really tanky too. Just ate that whole gargoyle combo. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I did use jellyfish a little bit on my first playthrough. Hey, that's fine, man. Dude, people <laughs> love the jellyfish. Although it is currently eating all that poison up. Oh, there we go. The jelly is slowly dying. And uh, Tom currently on Moog. Chris on Radon. Adef on Smarag. There's so many fights going on. It's crazy. Yeah, once this Moog Sewers does die, this will be GG's for Team Zoom. Yeah. Unless I mean, perhaps a Moog incident? Probably not. This is a this Moog fight's pretty straightforward. Perchance? Headshot damage. That's good. The Gargoyle right there forgot how to play. Uh, activating again. Definitely not a favorable Gargoyles for Zoodle, but... Oh, he's getting melted by the poison here. Oh my here. god. Get out of there. <laughs> Really close there. Doesn't yeah, have I any mean, healing though. As you yeah, as you can see, that's just the price that you pay by not grabbing any sacred tears. Your flasks are just so weak. Yep. So I mean, if he doesn't take care of this gargoyle fast, this is a huge threat. Um, also, it looks like Tom here is running out of heals as well, but he should be taking out the uh, the sewer moog, and that should be GG coming up here in a couple of minutes. Oh my god. Zoodle goes down to the Gargoyles. It's a disaster. <laughs> it's Jover. <laughs> um, yeah, there's like a couple more impaling thrusts here from Tom on the Sewer Moog, and it's yeah, it's going to be GG's for Team Zoom. Um, really nice match, though. Really nice. This is what's showcasing, honestly, um, of having like synergy with your partner on a board like this, where you're like, okay, you go for this, I go for that, and uh, you're able to both GG. just, uh, you know, Make sure that you can develop pressure together, which is huge. GG's there to Team Zoom. Um, first first W uh, on the board for them. Amazing. Nice. Yeah. Really well played. Also, well played to uh, Positive Vibes for, you know, sticking with it and getting some squares on the board. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Definitely just didn't uh, 
like let go and just uh, stuck with the the Vike and luckily pivoted off and started getting some squares. I thought that was really really nice to see for sure. Yeah. Um, let me see real quick if they are available. Uh, I'm so slow at typing today. Um. All right, going to go into our post-match interview here real quick with uh, Team Zoom and Team Positive Vibes. Um, and uh, then we'll go on another quick break before we go into Cattery versus Brino Machino. Uh, looks like they're all available, so I'll bring them in real quick. Oh, hold on. I forgot to change this. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh... Nope, wrong one. There we go. Perfect. All right. Oh, that's the wrong screen. Sorry. 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 All right, here we go. All right. Welcome in, guys. Nope. GG's Team Zoom. GG's, guys. Uh, also, GG's to Team GGs, uh, Positive Vibes. Uh, how? Okay. So, like, for a good recap from each team, Team Red go first, as in Team Zoom. Uh, how did the match feel? What was like any lines that you were kind of eyeballing? Any strats that you really liked that you pulled off this match? Go. Okay, Come go I'll ahead. go. <laughs> oh, Jesus uh, Christ. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the beginning strategy was like just at least me get something online in terms of uh, weapon and damage and then kind of go for some early squares into big bosses that uh, I can I can kill for like like the the one square bosses or the squares that have one boss on them right so for for fast squares yeah and then we started getting some pressure in column five column three and the diagonal and I looked at the diagonal after uh, when I was going for noble and I was like okay we can do god bosses and then I will have uh, access to capital with those and then I can go and do moog sewers and we can get a bingo when chris marked thops academy key i was like okay potentially he could beat me to godskin noble but um he was like when when he marked i think it was stabs or something mm -hmm. after academy key i was like okay he's not he's not going for that he's not going for the capital right now he's spending time doing something else Especially when he marked Misbegotten Crusader, I was like, okay, well, yeah, now I can just go for the the bingo and and the win. Um, yeah, I we was, had. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I, I was on a uh, Vike for about like ten minutes, so that's what that downtime was. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I figured you guys were going for tree bosses to set up Calm Three. Did, was there a reason you guys didn't go for tree bosses? Or... We thought you were ahead already. So we okay. just left it. Okay, we overthought that. Um, yeah. And then Zoodle started, when he finally got his weapon online, he went for Radon and went for the underground play, so that way we could cover both of those threats, the capital and the underground. Mm. Yeah. And uh, Team Blue, uh, thought process, early game, late game, <laughs> um, just overall, like, what was uh, your approach on this board? And uh, like, how did you deal with the threats? Because at some point which was a lot to deal with, uh, like a lot of pressure, obviously, is the column three, column five, diagonal, bingo line threats that, you know, Team Zoom was kind of displaying later on. Yeah, I mean, the first threat that appeared was kind of like the column three, basically. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I figured, you know, they, they hadn't been doing much in terms of, like, it hadn't marked a square in a bit when that was lined up. So I'm like, okay, they're probably gearing up for tree bosses. I'm just going to go try and do Vike to you know cut off the bingo worst case and then you know had a bit of a skill issue as, as you guys saw um uh and then column five adif was going for somber stone bell burnings but that was sniped. yeah i got i got um, sniped on spirit ash and somber stone it just felt like like you know once you get behind in bingo i think what separates the good players and the good teams from the great ones is being able to come up like come up with a strategy to return Mm -hmm. uh, and Zoodle was just one step ahead of me. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, that going for Elmer there was really good, just rushing that to cut off, because that was before we even had Thopski or Sacred Flask, so that was good foresight. 
on your guys' part to block the column one. Um, because I was gonna go there right after I got the key back and and whatnot. And I'm guessing you used Rosa yeah. Sacks because you no, got the we thirty were, no. in. I from think that? we were both Omen Killer Cleaver. Yeah, I used Omen Killer Cleaver. Um, oh, so you just did a stat dump for the thirty in. Yeah, I was gonna do Rosa Sacks, but then I was like, Omen Killer Cleaver doesn't take too many stats, and it's just a much much better weapon. Um. Yeah, and then by the time I got to like the the snipes and whatnot, the board is like super late game, and yeah, we just can't really compete with the board like that. Yeah, it's like the tough thing with like heavily late game boards with early game collection squares is like there's no synergy at all on early game to late game squares. So whichever player is like going for earlier things, or if it's both players, there is absolutely no setup. So like if the other team has prioritized later stuff, like Red did. It's just like, there's, you know, at a certain point, I'm like, okay, well, I can't do Rykard because Tom's already there. I can't do Fuse Champs because they probably both already have, like, two, you know, there's, like, no path. We just have to, like, clean up what we can, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's definitely a little bit uh, tougher to come back from from, from that angle. I, I would agree with that for sure. But, uh, I mean, you guys still honestly put in, like, great effort to try and get as many squares as possible on the board and try to get as many blocks as you could. Uh, so that was really, really nice to see. And yeah, the 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 Vike was definitely a little tough, but it also makes sense because it was like, okay, if they're on tree bosses right now, I'm gonna go for the long distance block. Let me go for Vike, uh, yeah. just to make sure that we can get rid of that in some way, uh, shape or form. But yeah, at the, at the end of the day, it did uh, you know kind of bite you in the butt there. But uh, yeah. those are the kind of calls that you know you, you just have to make at some point. So it's just yeah. a, it's just a tough thing to do. Uh, but GGs to both teams, guys. GGs uh, to Team Zoom for taking the dub today. And uh, uh, thanks so much for playing, guys. And I'll see you guys yeah, tomorrow. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, yeah good games, thank you, Domo. Positive Jeez. vibes. Wait, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. I, I'm sorry. Before I let you guys go, I, I Blanks, do you want to say anything? I'm sorry. I just kind of <laughs> took over there. Any, no, it's okay. Any input? No, I, w I, I was saying that um, in the middle of the match, the ritual pots and Elmer was actually, like, huge for uh, for you guys, for Team Soup, because mm. uh, you guys set up that diagonal, like, early enough in the game where you were, like, pushing it and then you went right away for like god bosses and then before anyone even knew it you were already like going down to sewer Moog, and you were like threatening bingo so that was huge yeah yeah Definitely. thanks that was that was all zoodle he saw it i'll admit it <laughs> <laughs> well well again ggs guys and yeah we'll see you guys tomorrow and best of luck tomorrow on your match uh and i hope you guys uh take care for the rest of the day Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Domo. Thanks, Blanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do I have to move these all separately myself? Okay. Hold on. Sorry. Okay, I, I, got it. <laughs> I was hoping they all just leave when they say bye, but they just sit there and wait. Um, anyways. Okay, cool.